also joined from Bahrain uh, via Democracy Now! video stream by Nabil Rajab, the president of Bahrain's Center for Human Rights, uh, facing possible military trial for publishing the photograph of Ali Sagar, a protester who died in custody. Um, can you tell us uh, about the situation now, Nabil? And are you yourself um, afraid of being taken uh, like Zaneb's family? Well, as you know, that I was uh, referred to the military court or military prosecutor for publishing photos of someone who was killed by the interrogators uh, by torturing him. And you know, government were, were trying to hide the crime they've been committing in the past few months. And as you know, at least 30 people have died so far, and more than 3,000 people were wounded. And approximately, we have 800 prisoners uh, out of 500,000 population, and that's a high percentage. So Bahrain government, by blocking journalists to come inside Bahrain, by blocking website, by uh, I mean closing down the only independent newspaper, they try to make a guide. They they want to make blockage on the news going outside to the outside world of the human rights abuse and violation. So my Twitter account and my Facebook account become one of the main uh, places where people seek information among the journalists, among the human rights organization. And I have uploaded those pictures, and that's upset government, because government don't want to show the crime they're committing. And they said they're going to take me to the uh, military prosecutor. And I think that is uh, intimidation and harassment and a pressure for me to stop my human rights work, but that won't let me stop. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue doing my work as far as I am free. As you know, the situation in Bahrain is very critical now. Uh, as I told you, many uh, people were arrested, among them doctors, teachers, unionists, human rights defenders, politicians, nurses, uh, all kind of professional bloggers. Yesterday, we have buried one blogger who was tortured till death also. You have at least three people uh, were uh, killed, uh, by, uh, were tortured to death in the past 10 days. Situation inside the prison is very critical. And as you know, uh, uh, torture is a culture here in Bahrain prison. And many human rights organizations were talking about it before Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and all FIDH and the OMCT were always talking about torture in Bahrain. And they've raised their concern. I've seen many letters to the king of Bahrain to open an investigation on those allegations. But unfortunately, none of these uh, concerns, letter or report, were even taken seriously by our government. So that is uh, worrying us, and we believe that many of those in detention now are facing torture. At least we have strong, a strong report that uh, leaders, people in old age, 60, 65 years of age, they were tortured. Besides that, you have hundreds, if it is not thousands of people were terminated from work based on sectarian background in the past one week. And we have hundreds of people, scholarship, and uh, were stopped. So they, they brought, they, were, they came back, they could not continue their school as Bahrain government stopped their scholarship because they protested against the government and demanded democracy and respect for human rights. Hundreds of people in jail for practicing their freedom of expression. People are tortured for expressing their freedom of expression. Uh, thousands of people sacked from their jobs. And you have uh, the crisis getting deeper and deeper as many people lose their job. And all that as a revenge, because one day, a month ago, almost half of the Bahraini population came out in the street demanding for democracy and respect for human rights. And that was disturbing the government. Government of Bahrain have invited other troops beside their own army to crack down the peaceful uh, protest. It seems that they had a green signal from United States government, and the silence of United States government also strengthened the, the opinion that we have that they had a green signal from Obama administration. And they, I mean, and they, you have four, five armies now are facing peaceful protests that were demanding for democracy and respect for human rights. A lot of casualties, a lot of uh, uh, dead people, a lot of injured people. You know that the hospital were occupied by the military since uh, one time now. And we cannot take any injured people, uh, uh, wounded people to the hospital. We treat them at home. We try to get as much medicine and spread it to the houses and stitching material for people wounds and 
and the injuries to be treated at home. Because once you take them to hospital, they will be treated bad, they will be tortured, they will be beaten, they will be arrested, Nabil, or they will very, be disappeared. Very quickly, um, so the role of Saudi Arabia uh, in all of this, uh, U.S. backed as well, and we only have 30 seconds. You know that any democracy here in Bahrain could have an impact on Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia are very much afraid of democracy getting closer to its border. And Bahrain becoming a democracy means Saudi Arabia sooner or later. So Saudi is willing to pay anything, uh, with, with any kind of cost, to stop any kind of uh, democratic movement in Bahrain. And that's what they have done. They have sent their, their own army, cracked down the uh, peaceful protests, and that's what we are witnessing today. Finally, um, the fact that the U.S. Navy is there, that the Fifth Fleet is based there, um, the extremely close relationship between Bahrain and uh, the United States, your message for President Obama? Well, until recent uh, month, I used to think it is a positive thing to have a strong relation with the United States. But now, now I, I realize it is, it is, it is a difficult, it is a not a positive one, because now— we are not supported by United States for our democracy, democratic movement because we have an American base. And our ruling family have guaranteed them that they, they will guarantee their interest and they'll guarantee their uh, military presence. And that's why Obama administration are not supporting us, but supporting the government. So this base is becoming too hard for us, too difficult for us, making our job more difficult. The interest of the United States, as they believe, it lies with those dictators and the repressive regime in the region, but not with any democratic. Uh, but this is not good for Obama administration, not good for the United States government. They are losing the heart and mind of people here. And I don't think it is a positive thing that they lose the heart and mind of people here. Now, Bill, we have 10 seconds. Why do you continue to speak out when so many of your fellow activists have been arrested and disappeared? Well, I mean, this is the cause of the job we are doing, and I'm, I'm going to continue speaking till I'm as far as I'm in Britain, as far as I'm alive, I'm going to continue doing. I believe in change. I believe in democracy. I believe in human rights. And I'm going to—I'm willing to give my life. I'm willing to give anything to achieve this goal. Nabil. And this is very costly, and I'm going to pay that cost, whatever it costs. Nabil Rajab, I thank you for being with us, President of Bahrain Center for Human Rights. Please stay safe as well.